Hey guys, how are you? So in this video, I'm gonna give you a few tips on building an MVP, a minimum viable product. So this is for intermediate level developers or maybe beginners who wanna start dabbling into the more advanced subjects. So let's just jump into it. I'll just read off the email and I'll answer as we go. Some of my questions are of technical nature. Perhaps I can get those answered via the Zoom meetings. Just in case you don't know, I have a mentoring program slash bootcamp. And we have total beginners and we also have people with 15 years experience. So here's somebody with experience is in the program. I give you an idea of some of the things we talk about and we cover in the program. Which point should I consider before programming the app? I don't want to jump into it and later realize that the architecture is a mess. Good question. So when you're developing an MVP, your minimum viable product, minimum viable product this is the first version of a piece of software that you're putting out there, most of the time, you're not gonna really understand what the ultimate use cases are, meaning you're not gonna understand completely what the app should do and how it should do it. So what that suggests is a process of development that is quick, nimble, dirty. You wanna be dirty, you wanna get it out there quick and dirty. You're gonna be breaking rules just to save time so you can get the software out there, get your MVP out there so that users can start using it. Because you can sit there and think about and try to come up with all the different ways this app should work, but ultimately you're just gonna be using your imagination and it's limited. Really, you have to get that app into the hands of users as quickly as possible. So the motto is, just like entrepreneurship in general, when you're releasing your first product, you want to get it out there as quickly as dirty, quickly, quickly, dirty as possible. I was going to say dirty Lee, but anyway, you understand. Get it out quick, see what happens, and then you can start refining. He continues, as the product matures, user roles may become more complex. Should I consider this already in the MVP to make it scalable? Okay, so yeah, he's right. You don't know if um, what the user roles will be like ultimately. You can guess. If you're lucky, you may get 60%, 70% of it, you know? So when I put out Studio Web, my learning SaaS that schools use today, I had conceived of the notion of the classroom. And in fact, I think we just call it groups at the time. But I didn't conceive of a lot of things. A lot of the uh, tools that we needed for the classroom, uh, we, just never, we just never considered it. So we didn't discover these things until people started using it, schools started using it, and they started calling us up in a panic. Hey, we need this, we need that, we need this, we need that. So yeah, so his next sentence was, should I consider this already in the MVP to make it scalable? Now, scale is the last thing you should be considering in your MVP. First of all, the uh, need for scaling apps is so overblown these days. Oh my God. Software, uh, architectures, uh, you know, meaning the frameworks that you use, uh, the server models that you're using, uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, hardware is so powerful these days. The scale is like something I wouldn't even think about it. It's not even a consideration. You'd be amazed how performant, poorly coded web apps are today for most applications. Chances are you're not building the next Facebook or Instagram. And so you have a lot of other things to be worried about uh, before you start even thinking about scale. So we don't consider scale. This is for web apps. We have multiple users concurrently hitting the application. Concurrently is a fancy word for many people at the same time. If you're building a, a mobile app that's native, then that's not an issue at all in 99% of, of the considerations, especially with MVP. Minimum viable product, your first version, don't worry about scale, it's not an issue. It's not an issue at all. So he's got a couple of entrepreneurial questions. Let's jump into it. I have shown the wireframes to potential customers. Nobody committed to, the per, to product, to purchase pre-product, but I got close. That's very interesting. If without even having a product, you're able to get people close to purchasing it, that tells you that the model, the concept behind the product could be viable. Now I say could be because when you describe a product sight unseen to somebody, their imaginations will kick in. So they may have in their heads an idea in their heads about what this product will be. 
And it may be aligned with what your idea is, but you don't know. It could be totally different. So again, uh, that still looks good. At least they're saying, hey, that's good. So if you got close to somebody actually putting down some cash without even having developed a product, that to me is good evidence that this is something you might want to pursue. Let me continue. Should I try to get aligned with customers on the wireframe designs once more before development or approach them later with a finished MVP? I would approach them with a, an MVP. You want to show them something. So, and it doesn't have to be fully functional. An MVP could maybe show the major functions of your app. And you have like, in, this, in the case of a web app, you may have all, you know, on your screens, on your views, you may have all a bunch of buttons that you're showing but they don't have functionality. So when you do your demo of the MVP, you just demo the major functionality. You tell them, this is just a demo. This is just an alpha. And here, this is what it does. But you show the other buttons graphically, but they have no functions. What I would do a lot of times is I would develop that MVP where it would, the, the, the prime use case, the prime function would work kind of. So for example, uh, I would use dummy data stored in text files as opposed to creating a whole database. And so I would display this dummy data or I would just hard code dummy data in the, uh, in the HTML itself. So I would say, you know, imagine, you know, you go to a database, you select here from a dropdown list and here's the data from the database. I wouldn't build that connection. I would just put fake data inside of the HTML itself so they can just see it kind of working, at least in concept. So that's how I would approach that. So he continues, my concern is that right now I couldn't promise a reliable delivery date and quality. Now, while that's normal, it's MVP. At this point in time, when you're developing an MVP, and if they put no money down, uh, there's no um, expectation of reliability on an alpha. Somebody has an expectation, but the alpha is gonna be fantastic. That's just nuts. But you just tell them, say, this is an alpha, it's gonna be full bugs. And uh, delivery day, again, ballpark is fine. One of the things I, I learned from one of my uncles who used to manage 25 and $50 million projects for uh, Canadian government back in Ottawa. And he was said to me that when you're looking at a project, when you do your budgeting in terms of time, and ultimately that means money, but in terms of time, if you figure it's gonna take you a month, figure it's gonna take you two and a half months to deliver. That, he said, was a good rule of thumb to operate on. Now, of course, with smaller projects where it's just you, you can be more accurate if you know how to price out and time out projects. But if you have more and more people involved in a project, then your accuracy in terms of uh, budgeting, in terms of time, will become less and less, will become less accurate because you've got more people, more variables. Very difficult to predict things when there are many, many variables getting into it. But I assume for this situation, you're working on your own. You can probably be, be a bit more accurate, especially if you learn how to track time as I teach in my freelancing course, shameless plug. Um, so you should be a bit more accurate. But again, this comes down to business skills where you present your MVP and you present, you present it to prospective buyers with proper context. So that means that you tell this is alpha. So it's going to be buggy. Uh, and re de delivery date, again, because this is new, it's alpha, it's an MVP, you're not exactly sure, you know. So reasonable people understand that. As long as you don't say three months, it turns out to be a year, right? You, gotta, you know, If you say three months and it's four months, five months, not a big deal, you know. I sometimes get the advice to quit my business as I am riding a dead horse after working on it over a year without real traction. Hmm. Yeah, that's a quick, that's a, as a side note, as an entrepreneur, that's one of the hardest questions to deal with is when is this idea a dead horse or is it just an idea that needs to be fermented? So I'll give you an example, two examples. I had a project, I poured a bunch of money into it, years of work, and it ended up making money, but not a lot of money. And I think uh, it took many years of it being out in the wild, earning income before I made my money back, at least in terms of uh, out-of-pocket expenses, but not in terms of opportunity costs. I got killed there. So, you know, in retrospect, looking back, this project, 
uh, it probably been better off for me to kill it early. <laughs> Problem is I had early indicators up front that, hey, this thing could work really well, you know? Good interest, people buying, et cetera. But it, ultimately, it didn't turn out that way. Another example of some friends who, uh, for many years, for seven years or so, the project was like, geesh, 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 very shaky. They were choking, meaning, you know, oh, it's difficult, borrowing money, uh, hard times. And then uh, seventh or eighth year, they became ultra successful. It just exploded, boom, so it was worthwhile. That roll of the dice, you know. Learning programming is something many perceive as a last move to postpone failure. And I see where they are coming from, but still feel like the idea has potential and I should stick with it. I'd just be interested in your view on this. Again, what I would do, uh, if you don't have, if you have an idea and you had some initial interest that was uh, positive, meaning that you almost got somebody to put some money down, even though you're not a programmer, and you didn't have anything to show. It was just a concept. That to me is a good early indicator. Doesn't mean it will work, but it's a good early indicator. So what I would do is I would uh, make sure you have income coming in so you don't feel pressure. Learn to code. It will make you a better decision maker with regards to the business if it ever takes off. And just build the MVP yourself. You know, it may take a little longer. That's okay. Don't ever put yourself, uh, put your back against the wall by giving yourself a financial deadline. Uh, that's one option. So you can bootstrap it slowly, meaning pull yourself up by the bootstraps, learn the code, build something simple. It doesn't have to be nice. It just has to, you know, just has to show what the basic functionality is, as I described earlier. Another option is to go raise money. That's possible. But when you're raising money, it's best to raise money as late as possible. The more stable the business model is, the more uh, evolved the project is, uh, ultimately even best, the more money it makes, the higher value the business will be. And so you'll be able to raise uh, more money without diluting your ownership. But understand, when you're raising money, that comes with a whole uh, barrel of monkeys you have to contend with, meaning you have to answer to the investors, which makes sense, it's their money. They're putting, if they put in a half a million, a million, five million, 10 million, they're gonna to wanna to know what the, what the heck's going on, you know? So you have to understand that as well, pros and cons. So what I would suggest is a general rule, if you have an MB, MVP idea and you don't have money yourself to pay for developers, I would learn to develop and I would uh, just start slowly building out your MVP if possible. Some projects just require, you know, a huge scale. Some projects require a very high level skill, but you, even putting out a basic alpha, dirty, uh, dirty alpha beta, a dirty alpha uh, implementation rather. Sometimes you're going to need to hire some talent, maybe bringing somebody to, part time to help you with certain things, uh, maybe set out architecture and then you can fill in the gaps. Maybe you can partner with an experienced developer and where they take care of that and you take care of the business end and there's all these different ways you can handle this. Uh, as I say, you got to learn to skin those cats well, because uh, scats can be skinned in scats. Cats can be skinned in many different ways, and depending on how you skin it, uh, will make a big difference in terms of the uh, whether a project is successful. And when we translate that uh, implementation, you know, execution on an idea is always much more difficult than coming up with an, an idea. There are lots of great ideas out there, but many times they fail, not because the idea is bad, it's because the uh, implementation, the execution on the idea is bad. Figuring out the exact business model, uh, how it should be implemented is, is the hard part many times. Anyway, there you go. Uh, this is just an example of some of the high level questions I get in the mentoring program, my bootcamp, uh, but we also have a lot of beginners as well. About 60% of the people are total noobs in the program. And then the other 40% are experts, are experienced to, I even have a few CTOs in the program as well, chief technology officers. So uh, yeah, I hope this video was uh, interesting. If you like this type of video, let me know in the comments below. And uh, if you're interested in getting mentored by me, you're interested in my bootcamp, uh, one of the things that uh, people love about the bootcamp is that you're actually learning from somebody who's been coding since 1994 
And because of my software SaaS and because of my ability to deliver uh, high quality curriculum effectively, I'm able to provide the service at a, a, a much less expensive than any boot camp out there. Um, people tell me I should raise my prices, but I want everybody who can or is interested to be able to jump in. All right, I hope this is useful. Bye. All right, I'm going to pose for uh, the thumbnails.